These are my babies that I'm growing indoors under the grow light. Hello there, my name is Liz, a self-confessed succulent addict. Welcome to my channel, Growing Succulents. My Mars Hydro SP3000, which I love so much. So thank you, thank you. This is not an ad for Mars Hydro. This is about baby succulents, growing baby succulents. So this one has been plucked at the end of autumn, if my memory serves me right. So this uh, tray here has now grown to lots of pups. Some of them I've added only uh, about three weeks ago. So like the Sedevaria pudgy over here, that's just the roots just sticking out of the air. So I actually just laid them here. So I pluck it from a newly bought third Sedevaria pudgy or vanilla vis. That's what it's formerly called. These ones now are, how old are you? Oh, you're almost four months old. So almost four months old, but this one has been plucked earlier, the Chihuahua Yensis, Cat's Claw. I think in other places they call it Cat's Claw or other countries. And this one has been really, really good, this tray here. I haven't had many issues with it. Uh, no mealybugs or pests. And as you would know, when you're growing succulents indoors, you are going to encounter a lot of pests. For one, you get lots of gnats, mealybugs, and uh, some tiny little white crawling thing. And that is due to lack of air circulation. So if you're gonna grow succulents indoor, make sure it's well ventilated and lots of air circulating. So we got a fan, I'll turn the fan on. But anyway, with this ones now, the drill with the babies. Okay, so I'll just show you first. So how to grow babies indoors. I think this is what the, um, or put it this way, maybe outdoors as well. So you can do this outdoors, but put it in a bright, uh, cool, dry place and also preferably something that can absorb the moisture so this is a cardboard container i just plucked this uh, variegated black prince monstros i was repotting my plants some of them were two weeks old and there's a couple of new ones that's only a few days old in here but i just throw them all in this is actually black prince monstros it says the label but there's um Doris Taylor, I got Doris Taylor, I've got Chihuahua Yensis. So this is a mix of different variety of Echeveria. And cardboard box, first of all. Okay, we'll leave it there. And see, these ones are more advanced. When did I pluck you? Oh my goodness. Okay, this is Echeveria Mundas. And again, you can see that some of them has already rolled out of the roots trying to claw their way out into some soil. Basically, they're searching for moisture. There's moisture in the air, so the roots would go aerial. So there you go. So I will try to reach out. And this one is just sort of budding up, that one there. Okay, this one hardly have any roots yet. See the little uh, tip? It looks like it's fanning. So on the edges, it's showing a promise of roots. But the leaf, it's still nice and fat. So it's still going to go a long while before the roots will come out. And when it gets to this stage, I'm not even going to touch that. I'll just wait for them to root up. And so as this one, I will wait for it until the roots will shrivel up or dry up. And there'll be hopefully more roots. But sometimes that's not the case. So I will remove the pups if necessary, if it's not rooting. But, so this one is all budding up as well. So all of them, so I've got some ebony here as well. This ebony is, okay, two of them. So it was the ebony that's got the roots. So two, but no pups, no pups yet. I am still yet to have a leaf baby from ebony. But anyway, so this is Mundas. Mundas is a cross between Echeveria Lawi 
and Lilacina. So this is a mother plant. I chopped the head off because it's just too slow. So I decided to chop the head off and strip all the top head so I can have more babies. And look at them. Oh my lord. I'm going to have lots and lots of babies. But this one now, uh, I have to take them somewhere a bit warmer because down here we're coming, uh, well it's spring, it's springtime now here in Australia and the temperature where I have them here is quite cool. We have 25 degrees forecast today. Just let me rattle on because there is a point to this. The temperature at the moment, they, well the forecast today is 25 and cloudy. March to June is when they were mostly plucked and the temperature was cold outside but inside being winter we have the heater on and when you have the heater on this whole area here gets warmed up and then I have the fan on and then the heat will just go through my plants and it feels like they're in the tropics at that stage at that time since during winter it's warm that sort of tickles them and says oh yeah I can grow now so they start growing really fast and now I find that this is springtime here and well it's spring now so September is the start of spring here in Australia and October uh, we're in the middle of spring and the temperature today was 25 degrees but it's cloudy it's been rainy and cold for the past few weeks still it still feels like it's actually autumn weather so inside the house we we sort of um, have days wherein we turn the heater on but most of the time it's cool and the temperature right now here this is a sci uh, this is uh, growing succulents is like you have to be like a scientist where in you're experimenting and be aware of everything so right now okay what does that say so it's only about 10 degrees in here celsius and then that's 46 or something Okay, I can't tell. So that's the temperature in here right now. So these plants are sort of going into semi-dormancy because the temperature outside is warmer than it is inside. Do you get my drift? But anyway, I'm going to move on. So I notice or I have observed that the growth is not as fast as I would want them to be. In the area that I have them here, we have a two-story house. So cool air goes down and hot air goes up. So preferably, these plants should be kept upstairs uh, where it's warmer and drier. And I will have to move them soon. What was the topic about? The babies, isn't it? So I need to move them soon. So that's why I'm doing this video. I have to do a few series of videos before I take this away. Uh, so you won't see this area and I can clean up here. Do some spring cleaning. And the babies, some these ones I just watered last night. Okay, so this one now. Now this one, you can see that there's barely any roots on that one. This is my little Miranda. And this is actually not a Miranda. I can't think of a name. So I just put the name Miranda. Since I haven't got a Miranda. So, but I suspect this could be a uh, prolifera or something like that. Or prolific uh, agavoides. But anyway, this one now is uh, growing. So look how big it is. It's the biggest of all of them. So they're all sort of uh, faux Miranda <laughs> or fake Miranda. So, but, and even that one, look. It's the roots are sort of aerial. Okay, I'll just pull it out. It's going down in the bottom now. So, look, all the roots coming out. Look at that. And so I have to bury it down so as to encourage the roots to go deep into the soil instead of coming out. But in saying that, I have to keep the soil moist or else they would just go root up on top and not go down. So if the soil is dry, the succulents, if, even if you bury it into the soil, they will try to crawl out. So you will find that your succulents is sort of just growing on shallow roots, it may seem. It's because your soil is dry. But if you keep your soil moist in the bottom, the tendency for the succulent is to reach out for the moisture down. It's in their nature to do that, to reach down to where the moisture is. And... Of course, speaking of moisture, they don't want too much moisture as well. So this is a good example of this baby 
having too much moisture when it's not ready to take in the moisture yet because they absorb the moisture through the roots or the water from the roots. And if they haven't got roots, they will absorb it through the leaves. Therefore, you are going to have some root uh, rotting problem. So this one now, what I do with this, to encourage this to grow roots really quick, and this would be, okay, this would just be a matter of a couple of days that you will see a lot of growth, okay? Or, okay, I'm just going to push this out now, so I hope I get the light. Okay, so I'm just going to slowly, boop, that was easy. Okay, so it's really easy. Now this one we have to discard. So now this one now, so you can see that there's hardly any roots on that baby there. So now this one I can put in my moist soil. Okay, but just barely sort of on top. Don't bury it too much because if the leaves have contact with the wet soil, so it's not even like moist, it has to be moist, but then if it's wet, like this potting mix here, this is just my master soil mix, my master succulent soil mix that I used in here. So I just have to put it on the surface like that. But if I take this plant with sort of barely have no roots and put it in cocoa pit like this one here. So these two plants were watered last night. So I watered them last night. So this is like 12 hours later. And so the surface of the soil is now dry and it's still heavy so it means that the soil or the rest of the pot here so it's only shallow as well but it's all cocoa peat this one is just all cocoa peat and so they don't have any contact see the back of the leaf this is what are you this is a very sensitive plant so this plant is an unknown plant so I just called it rosy because <laughs> it looks rosy so this one it's like a lawi but it's not a lawi and anyway this one now is one plant that rotted because I bought it from someone who keeps her succulent dry like really wilting dry she doesn't water it at all hardly hardly watered and poor babies they they grow to a certain stage and once they get bigger she tries to uh, pan it off to someone else and sell it before it dies and then I already had three plants or four actually from her that died um, but not before I could take some leaves. So the minute I see signs of the plant dying, I pluck the leaves out. That way I still have a chance of growing some babies. Okay, is my voice getting loud again? I'm getting excited. Okay, so that way I have a chance of getting babies, at least getting babies from it. So this is also, this plants here, pretty in pink. So this pretty in pink had just melted on me. I got a cluster from her. And this one's just started dropping the um, leaves off. And I kept it in the same soil that she kept because I thought it's a grown plant. And so I should leave it in the soil that it's in. And wrong mistake. <laughs> of course, the plant died. So really, now I make it a habit of replacing the soil irregardless of where I get my succulents from. So this one's from a cluster of, uh, of plants and so I lost the whole plant. The whole plant is now gone. It's dead and it's dried up somewhere but not before I could manage to pluck some leaves that haven't rotted because they're all root rotted and slowly one by one they started falling off. And this one's now is, look how many babies I've got. One, two, three. And they haven't rooted yet. So that one is sort of still a tiny little bit of root, I can see. But most of them are not rooting or haven't rooted yet. So I think there's a couple that has roots, but I don't want to dig it out because they are fussy. Oh, that one's got another bit of root as well showing. But anyway, so I just put them on top. So I try, I still keep the soil uh, messed up. I still mess it up, but I don't bury the plant. I just, oh, is that the one with, oh yeah, that's the one with the root. Look, 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 see? See, look at that. So that's the one with the roots. And look how healthy the root is. So I find that even if you have a plant that's weak 
And if you grow them hard and they survive, they become really strong, healthy plant. So this is what I'm doing with these babies here. You might be fragile and delicate, delicate, but after I'm finished with you, you'll be nice and strong. And my budgie just flew in. Oh my goodness, Pedro, come here. Come. Okay, you sit on mommy's shoulder. He wanted to land on uh, these plants. And that's the reason why I want to take these plants out as well, because the budgie has been um, roosting up the top of my mass hydro here and see the little poop there. So now I have to clean that up because this is a naughty boy. So I have to remove this grow light now and move it upstairs. So, and okay, he just flew away again. So that is one of the trick. And also this one's now, I'm gonna show you this one's. So this one has been uh, well watered. So 12 hours and look how dry it is. Already the edges, I can see some dryness. Look, okay, go over here. So that's already sort of dry. So this is what I like about cocoa peat. Uh, I have less casualties with cocoa peat. And look at that mini bell growing. Look at that. So I just, the mini bell actually, so you can see some that's sort of fallen off. Uh, if I hit uh, my plants here, those who want see, they need to be plucked out. Where's the mini bell? I don't know if I'm... Yep, see that mini bell in the center there. They need to be pulled out, the propagated cuttings. And so every, every time I water, I hit it and the leaf will just fall off. And so I have to put them here. So, but then, oh look, tiny little baby there. I don't even know what you are. Avocado cream. Oh, okay. So I'll leave you there for now. And then anyway, so the gnats. Okay, look at that. Another gnats flying around. Come here, come here. So there's lots of gnats. So you're going to have a little strippy thing. So I don't care if this video is long, people, my lovelies. But it's just I, I really need to pass on this information to you. So this one now, I'm going to show you how I water them. So I've got a container here with power feed. So this is a liquid fertilizer. So even my babies, yes, I will, I've fertilized them. So if someone wants to know how I fertilize my succulents, please, uh, I can't do a specific fertil <laughs> fertilization video. So for now, you have to do little installments. So please watch my video because it's packed with information. Okay, so I just water it like so. And I saturate them. Okay, so this one's got a lot of rooted. <laughs> oh, okay, am I screaming in the camera? This has a lot of rooted plants. So no worries. I can soak this all in. Look. Okay. And this one, see, it's still wet, that one. This is my master succulent soil mix. This is my anacamceros. And grown from seeds. So I have to keep them moist as well to grow them. They were grown outside, but it was just slow. So I brought them in here and transplanted them there. And hang on, look at my West Rainbow. Isn't that beautiful? But the piece of the stones is this one. Oh, look at that um, yellowy pink at the front there. That is just so gorgeous. I hope I'm capturing that. That is so beautiful. And I think I'm going to leave that plant there because that's just going to die if I pluck that out. So I have to leave it with the mommy and see or the stem, the original stem, see how long it lasts. Anyway, I'm just gonna continue here. So now, I'm gonna pump it up, pump it up. Okay, we go here, whoopsie. Now, this one's, so now this one's here, it's dripping. I am not going to water them because they're still pretty wet, but this one's here are dry. And those leaf, has been there for a long time, at least about three months, and they haven't sprouted yet. And my little rosy. So, but these ones are, what are you? Sedevaria silver star, most of these ones now. And so I'm going to water, but even this one, you can water it if they're dry or palustova. But do not bury its head in the sand or in the soil. And oh, look at man. What are you? Mendoza or mini bell? One of the two. Variegated mini bell. Look how big you are now. Beautiful. Okay. And so 
This is my Bucky Python Bractiosum, little fatty purple uh, plants. I love, 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 love them. And there you go. So this is every day. People are going to have, um, some of you are going to have a heart attack again because you see me watering my plants like this. And I tell you, the, I always say the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So that means uh, show me some results and I will believe you. A lot of people just talk, but shows nothing. Oh, sorry. Oops. It's dripping. It's dripping. Okay. So this one needs to be transplanted. Most of these are grown from uh, leaves. And my Kalisha Rosato. Again, this is to give away. I don't know. I should really propagate this because I got my mother plant and this one. And that's it. And, oh, the frizzle sizzle. The frizzle sizzle loves, loves, loves the cold and the sun. But we haven't had any sun lately, hardly. So I brought it inside to grow. And I shouldn't be watering that. But anyway, I did. So I'm just looking because I just watered last night. And... I'm just seeing what needs to be watered. There you go. So another Sedivaria Pudgy. Vanilla Vis. Oh, look at this little fat. So, so hang on. I should do a different video for this for now. For now, you've got uh, watering and growing succulent babies inside. So this one is dripping. Look, I'm trying to stop. Okay. I need a um, container to put them in. There you go.